Hey, welcome to another episode of That's Good Enough, the podcast where these three stooges get together and talk about, I don't know, life that uh, doesn't need to be that difficult. It just is. That's good enough. So, John, Jeff, and Paul, uh, how are we doing, guys? Excellent. Doing good? Good. I love that Jeff's looking over there, but we can see him here. Yeah, I'm getting What's going stuff on? on my phone here, so... Um, no, no worries. Just judging. Dramatizing. Yep. Just judging. Yep. So, so guys, uh, how are you guys doing? Why don't we do a round robin? John, John, what's up with you? You're oldest. A uh, couple things. I uh, just finished a big week at work. Had my first concerts, so spectacular concerts. Uh, okay, thanks, Jeff. How about you next? That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, and the Sorry. family's yes. hanging out. We had a... Had an eventful week. So, Jeff, now go. No, I'm kidding. So, what did you say? You had a spooktacular concert? Spooktacular concert. Yeah, we did the song Voodoo. Got everyone all riled up. Our best, biggest attendance yet. The program is bigger, and the results, the response is really, really cool. And I got that out of the way. Of course, when I'm gone for like every night uh, during the week, my family, you know, Sam feels like a single parent. And so things get out of balance. That weekend, always following is you know, reacclimating. So, yeah. Yeah. How about you, Jeff? Oh, outstanding weekend. I had a fun wedding uh, that uh, Paul and I were both at. I'm sure he'll talk about it. And then beautiful fall weekend here in, on the lake. We went around the lake today. It was just incredible. 60 degrees, full fall colors in effect. It was awesome. Yeah. Yeah, it's this is, uh, you know, I, I was just talking about it on our earlier podcast. I was just talking about, like, this is this, this is one of the reasons I, I, I still, and John, I, I know you love California, and I, it's it's where you're at, and it's where your family is, it's where your people are. But, I mean, I there's there's a piece of this that just, I, I just, like, even going, the one time I went to Florida and uh, for Thanksgiving, or uh, Christmas one time, I just, like, I love the change of seasons. And I know you guys love them, too, but, I mean, like this weekend, I'm like sitting back having a cup of coffee, you know, that video I sent you guys. And I'm just like, I'm, I'm like overload, overload. This is so just beautiful. It's it's like a canvas in my backyard because we have all these maples Then we have some birch trees and we have, so we have bright red, bright orange, yellow, you know, still some green with a couple of the other trees that we have. And it's like, it's like a canvas. And I just, I, I'm like, I'm just going to sit there on my lawnmower and I mow the lawn for half, you know, half a day. It was crazy. <laughs> And one and two. Right. Yeah. And so, I, go ahead. I was just going to say, I definitely miss the seasons. I like that I'm kind of stuck in my perpetual favorite season. However, uh, I fall, fall was actually my, my true favorite growing up. And uh, I miss yeah. it. I saw your video this morning and I was very jelly, very jelly. Well, and, and and it's one of those things. I mean, it's easy to like fall too. It's it's you know my birthday. We have a lot of things going on. We have football. It's my anniversary when when Justin and I got married. It's it's all these different things. But but I also you know I don't know if I'm just getting older, but I'd love your guys' perspective of this. But it's almost like a little bit too of like fall. It's changing the season. You know what I mean? The trees get beautiful and then they go dormant. Like we lose everything, and then they go dormant. You know what I mean? And then we do hard things. Like we go into harsh winters, you know, harsh, harsh months. And I don't know, I, I like the, I like the analogy there. I like the analogy of like, all right, we're, we're, you know, flipping the switch, let's go, roll up the sleeves, you know, put on the coats. We're going to, we're going to do some hard things. And I kind of like that. Yeah. I, and from my perspective, I, you know, growing up in Minnesota until I was 18, then I left, then I came back and I was 30 so I had been away for a long time. And then when that first winter was looming, because I moved back in like late summer and I felt that like just this heavy, like a, like, huh, no, no, like no one goes that way. It comes back. <laughs> and, uh, but I ended up getting in the groove of it. And it was very, very, uh, you know, the variety and, and winter can be very fun as well. I just love it because every season change brings on the new fun, right? And it, it's just a new season of fun, right? So now yeah. we, as we go come out of fall, we have the nice transition. We deer hunt. That's always fun. Always a blast. Then you're going into holidays, right? And you've got Thanksgiving and, and Christmas and, and uh, New Year's. 
and just a whole new, you know, branch of fun and the transitions are, are great. And I, I love them. I've, I've honestly come to love winter the past couple of years because of, um, you know, ice fishing now. It's just, it's just another, you know, season of fun. Um, so yeah, I, I love it. Welcome it. And it's great. So, yeah, well, and, and I, it's interesting cause we weren't really like, we were never huge hockey players. We were never huge um, skiers. You know what I mean? So we never really adapted to the winters. You know, we just we just lived through them, right? Mm-hmm. We always had to do our chores when we were on the farm and all that stuff. So we just never embraced it. So it's funny hearing you say that, Jeff, because I felt like I didn't really, like, really appreciate the winters until I got into cross-country skiing <laughs> and now fat tire biking. Like, fat tire biking, like, I can't wait for the snow so this, you know, the river bottoms opens up so we can go fat tire biking because they you know groom a trail and it just you fly and it's I, it's it's one of my favorite things now so to your point and then doing cold plunges and getting outside in the cold and like just embracing the crap out of it i, I it really flipped my my appreciation of, of winters embrace the suck right you got to get out there and enjoy oh, it yeah i love that phrase that's one of my favorite phrases and and, and still you know I'm, I'm still real though too like in march we always try to break up you know what I mean? If it's February, it's dark. You're always inside. I, I like that idea of breaking it up and, you know, going for a small trip, you know, four day weekend down, you know, somewhere warm, break it up a little bit, but then come back to it and yeah, embrace the sun for sure. I love that. That's and the other, the other thing that I remember about the winter, uh, especially when I was a teacher and even as a, as a young performer is that that was your kind of extended period where you kind of went dormant from being able to go around and you focused on a, like a craft or a, or a, or a skill, or you could really get into a, a routine of either whether it's health, you know, getting healthy, or if it's learning in this skill or that skill, you could really, cause there was nothing else to do. So you could really hone in and focus on or, something or, productive. Or, or need a point of my team's helmet. Remember that? <laughs> The what? Was, was, was that needles point or whatever where you pulled the thing last uh, our latch cross cross stitch <laughs> yeah. is that what it was yeah you remember that yeah yeah cross stitch you got that for christmas one year and i remember you did that like that was your that was your project for the winter or whatever you that's did right. that's right. so, yeah i'm gonna do something besides drumming or light yeah. right oh light bright i remember <laughs> hey no i i totally agree with that john though i i do i love that idea of of um um, all right. Well, all right. What's the goal? What's the, you know, what's the thing we're going to, we're going to tackle. And, and, uh, you know, I don't know, the original Tyson challenge that we did way back when the, the, uh, the biggest loser actually, didn't we do that as a family? Wasn't that, mm-hmm. that was like over the winter months. And it was like yep, the biggest yep. loser. All right. Like who can be the biggest loser in, in our Tyson group? And I don't think we had zoom or any of that stuff. We just literally did it on a sheet of paper and, and I don't know, did we email or we just had a certain January. Yeah. Yeah, it was New Year's yeah. resolutions. So, like everybody, right? So, yeah, laminate paper, tape on the wall. Look at the, you know, the chart, and then just uh, uh, maybe a phone call <laughs> or in person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A little bit of accountability piece to it. Um, yeah, no, I, I love it. I, I love it. it. It's, it's, it's really cool. Um, yeah. So, and then, yeah, for me this weekend. This was not only the fall colors and it went for a run for a trail run, but I got to officiate my first wedding. That was really cool. You officiated? Was, yeah. Oh, I didn't. You didn't know that. I didn't. You, you didn't know, know that. I remember you told me way back when, but I, you know, I'm old. Just don't care. <laughs> you just don't care. I get it. Right. Uh, no. What? Yeah. Right. I, right. I, yeah. I officiated it. I I think it went all right, but I I absolutely loved it. It was it was a lot of fun. Uh, got in touch with this DJ. The DJ is like, uh, you need to put a website together. This would be awesome for you to do it again. And so, I don't know. We'll see once. You nailed it, man. I was impressed. I was there. I was a witness of this. And Paul, you did an amazing job. You really did. I mean, I was really impressed by it. Very, um, very articulate and very smooth. Very smooth. That was good. Well, and so, well you done. know, weddings... Oh, wow. first of all, thank you. I, I really do appreciate that. Um, but but uh, weddings, you know, they're so different than what, you know. Well, I, the, all three of us, I guess, we're, we're, you know, a little different, right? They were, we all did our own thing a little bit, but they're becoming more of that, you know, people are religious, but they're not the hardcore, you know, like, like 
like my my wedding at the cathedral and the whole you know big music and, and just short and sweet you know, hour and a half this was short and sweet but it was also i you know i think it was pretty personal you know what i mean we had we had Very. nieces and, and and nieces doing the music for it one was got on right the to show, the heart of it one was on the piano and yeah it was awesome i just thought it was i thought it was really well done and I mean, people are kind of saying hey we want to make it our way that means that we're not going to invite the world too you know what i mean it kind of is what it is and and, you know, at first you're like, oh, no, you have to do this. No, you don't understand. You have to do this. They're like, no, we don't. We're going to do it our way. And it's like, all right. Yeah, here we go. We're going to roll with it. In fact, I one of the one. reasons why. Go, go ahead. ahead. Well, one of the reasons why I got asked to officiate was that out of the blue, their, their pastor that they really like is, is in Apple Valley here. And they're like, uh, great. But it's, he's going to charge us $1,000 to come up and do a 15-minute service. Up in, you know, in a 15, 20-minute service. And I was just like, I have bucks. I said, I'll do it for free. And they're like, would you? And I'm like, oh, hang on, let me check. And, you know, all of a sudden I, I was ordained, you know, dude. and here we go. So, uh, it was in a church, though. No, no, no. it was, it was oh. outside, outdoors. I was say. Out, yeah, right on the backside of this beautiful place, Mulligan. And perfect oh, weather, the most beautiful fall oh. day. I mean, it was idyllic, or idyllic, uh, just unbelievably yeah. beautiful. Right on. Yeah. But hey, here's That's my cool. side note. I have a side comment on this. That's why, okay, now I understand why John and nor Paul responded. Why didn't you respond to my text? I said, Paul, tonight, and it's a picture of James Brown in Blues Brothers saying this Can is you Paul see tonight. The light? Can you see the light? Nothing. <laughs> I got nothing from either of you. I'm so disappointed. I, I, I didn't get the context now. It's like, oh. Yes, exactly. I, yeah. I figured that's what it was. You didn't know um, yeah. or could, didn't remember uh, that right. Paul was officiating. But anyway, you did a great job, Paul. It was awesome, and the event was incredible. Yeah, yeah, it was it, it was a it was a lot of fun. We went for <laughs> to, uh, for a long period of time dancing. It was it was fun. It was really well done. So um, and and just a beautiful weekend. So yeah, so that's so Jeff and I were together, John, this weekend, and. Um, uh, and you were busy at a band concert, the spectacular. Love it. Yeah, lots going on, man. That's cool. Um, the the pictures of their family just were gorgeous, and uh, it looked like just a great time. And uh, uh, Jeff and Lisa, I heard you guys and everyone. I heard everyone had a good jovial time, and that you guys uh, had. Where was the after party at? Well, that was the cool part. It was uh so it was in Sartell at the golf course there. And oh, so yeah. they had it outside, right? I mean, they, they have a setup so you can have your wedding outside. They did it outside. Then you go right into the, um, the party room there. It was just oh, a cool. blast. Yeah. Yeah. yeah we great. Putting there away great setup. A years back. Yeah. Yep. Is great Laura, place. Laura and, uh, Oh yeah, you're you're thinking Blackberry, the, oh, the right. Blackberry golf course. Yeah, Blackberry. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's a picture on that on the golf mug that we have, by the way, Grandpa and Danny. Grandpa and Danny. Yep. Yep. And they're doing that. That's at that Blackberry golf course. Yeah. Yeah. Very very cool. So so um, but John, you had some you had some other news this weekend. Yeah, I got some. I had a lot of news this week. I was kind of a kind of a beat up thing. So, but we're all. We're going to be just fine, but You're I've doing got right. some years in full the blown, sun. Full-blown okay. AIDS, right? What's that? Full-blown AIDS, I heard. A little flown AIDS happening. Got a little, yeah, I've got to nice have a, 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 it's a quick one. I said, I said full-blown AIDS. Full-blown AIDS. Okay. That, so, that's what you have. Problem one, hearing AIDS. Flown AIDS, full-blown AIDS. Deficit <laughs> thornail. Number two. Bang my knee up on a marching band prop. Number three, got a little skin cancer here. So we're going to get that scraped off. I'm a hot mess right now. Literally, I was conducting and I would like limp up to the podium. And it's, it's, I've got to get a new set of hearing aids and a new like uh, uh, prescription. So right now in the classroom, it is pretty, I mean, I'm aware, but you know, if I ask a question, it's like, shit, I didn't hear that. So I'm sorry. Oh, <laughs> uh, uh, no, that's awesome. I'm like, no, 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 let me try it. Let me try it. But I'm feeling, it's, I feel like an old man right now. <laughs> but, well, it's because you are an old man. Oh, <laughs> I'm only 29 or eight. Again? Yeah. <laughs> 
You sounded you sounded so much like Gustafson right there, uh, Jeff from Grumpy Old Men. That, well, that's what I was going for. You yeah, well, you got it. Yeah. Uh, so, really so John, any so let's let's start with your knee. Any uh, update? MS, uh, MCL, AS, ACL. What's what's going on? I have yeah, a, a small meniscus for tear, um, and my my tendons are are heavily sprained, whatever that means. Uh, and so it's, but I'm I'm walking on it. I might have a few bone spurs that I I have to see an orthopedic specialist now to see um, what the it, from my MRI what's going on. So there's some a little lot of little things going on. I, I think I'll probably be okay with that. I don't want to have surgery on that. But yeah, hard. follow up follow up with that though because you you don't want to let that exacerbate because then you're just like it's always hurting unless you find the right rehab thing. So yeah, stay close um, to that. Don't let that one go too far. Right. I'm definitely getting a better range of motion every day still. It just it slowed down. Uh the rate of improvement slowed down. Um and then yeah, I'm gonna sit down for a day and they what they do is you you said you're very familiar with the procedure, Paul. My first question when you get that call, you know, you're like you hear the 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 C word, you know, you're like, oh my gosh. Yeah. Um my first question is, you know, spreading, you know, is this even, but, but she was very, my doctor, very quick to reply that this is not that. And uh, here's what this is and here's how we handle it. And then after talking to people and I didn't talk, uh, many people that kind of talk, yeah, my grandpa, yeah, my cousin, yeah, my, we all yeah. get this and they scrape every so often. Uh, Paul, you said you're familiar with it too. Yeah, so it's melanoma. Essentially, um, uh, so the, what the surgery they're going to do is called Mohs surgery after yeah. the doctor that actually discovered it. And it's a, a, the dermatologists do this at, in, inside their local clinics. And then they, they scrape it down to, and they just essentially put it on a Petri dish, look under it at, at a, at a, in a telescope or a telescope, uh, microscope. microscope. And then and they'll, they'll find out, they'll keep going until they, they see no cancer again. And then they'll, they'll patch you back up and they'll usually have a either a, professional come in and do it or they'll do it themselves and stitch you back together and it's and it, it that's as good as it i mean you're done um but it's but it's called most surgery and if you actually are really have a sense of humor about it go watch the seinfeld episode because there's a notorious seinfeld episode about this dermatologist and she keeps talking about how she saves lives it's the girl friend of jerry and he's like she tells people she's saving lives She's a pimple popper. What do you mean she's saving lives? She's saving lives. And then it was like the final day on their lunch and she, he's ready to break up with her. And she's a real attractive dermatologist. And then the little guy, some other third party comes up and says, thank you so much for saving my life from skin cancer. And he's like, damn it, skin <laughs> cancer. That's what it was. I think I remember remember that, yeah. Mm, yeah, that's anyway. exactly what she said. Mo's surgery, Mo's procedure. Yeah. Yep. So, so it, and it's very, it's very common and it's not one of these things like with breast cancer and easily can get in the lymph nodes and, and metastasized. So, um, I think you're in good hands, but, but rightfully so you're getting it checked out and you're getting it taken care of. Yep. Yep. Getting what is that? Done? Getting it taken care of. So yeah, well, that was an eventful <laughs> that happened on the day of the concert too. I'm like, Oh, okay. All right, let's go. <laughs> but, um, what else? When, when, when is the surgery, John? 27th of November. Okay. So, so it's scheduled. Good. Yeah. Yeah. I've got it scheduled, ready to go. We're going to do a little traveling on the holidays, going up to Seattle for Thanksgiving. Okay. And coming out, uh, I think coming out your way. So we're going to have to chat. Ah, so, nice. we could do a live. We could do a live podcast in December. Live. There face you go. to face. Real late at night. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> That's a great idea. Yeah. We can do. We can bring back the three pipes episode. That'd be hilarious! <laughs> oh my gosh, my three sons, my three pipes, not those pipes, knucklehead, the real pipes. <laughs> oh, I thought you wanted to see my pipes. Sorry. No, nobody wants to see those. Oh man! So all right, so yeah, you got a lot going on there, John. Yeah. How about um, what what's uh what's that that's good enough in your life? Like, what's the uh that'll do? What, what well, uh, Paul uh, cut wood with uh, Dad and Carter. Paul, you must have a story about that. Oh my gosh, it's 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 literally that. I'm so glad you brought that up because it it it's it just is so much. All right, so doing a project with Dad, right? We you know we all absolutely love him, but I mean it just is 
is the exact opposite of what I would do. Like he has all of these trees that the, the, uh, the electric company cut Someone's down because the trees were starting to grow in, into, what was that? A uh, ring. Oh, you, somebody said your friend door. Um, the trees were growing up into the power lines. And so they came in and just kind of cut them off and they just left a mess everywhere. Well, dad wanted to clean up. Sure, absolutely. And so we, we were, you know, doing a lot and, you know, it's hot and we were kind of getting a bunch of stuff done. And then I'm like, all right, we're about three quarters of the way there. Now we just have to split up this wood, stack it here. And then we can limb off a couple of this. And he's like, nope, that's good enough. So I'm like, so we get the brush hauled away and then he has all these scraps still sit there. And I'm like, and he's like, yep, we're done for the day. I go, what, what do you mean? I, I, I have another hour. I don't have to be anywhere for another hour. You know what I mean? I'm like, I have the chainsaw here. And like, he gets upset that I wanted to do more. And, it, yep. and, it's, and, it, and it's so, you know why? It blows my mind. Cause that's what? good enough. <laughs> <laughs> it's so crazy. It's just, I, I, and, yeah, I, I don't know. What are, what are you guys' thoughts on that? I mean, it just, that was the way it's been. You know what I mean? It's, it's like, like you put something away, put it away kind of half ass or something it's like this, that. It's the Stearns County mentality. And you know what? It serves them well. It's great. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Right. So it goes right along with that. Like, hey, I don't need that to be out of the way right now. I'd rather go hang out with you guys. I'm I'm sure it was part of it, right? There's well, there's uh, and it's it's a lot of this bigger bigger sort of interrupt part of this bigger picture, right? If he if he knew what was gonna happen, you know, the rest of the day and, and, and then tomorrow, there's no wasted time. You don't have to get that extra leave or that extra thing because it's not gonna matter because we gotta go do this now. We don't we don't have time. Uh in my life, I'll just kind of go into like in music and planning a concert. You know, I could be perfectionistic and the kids want to be about every little thing, but that's good enough. Clicks in all the time because I'm like, yep, yeah, it's it's going to sound good. No one's going to notice the difference. We all know there's a lot of stuff to fix, but sure. that's good enough. On to the rest. And and we all as musicians, we all have it um, called, I call it perfectionistic disease, where you went, you get so caught up in the micro, you forget about the macro and you you, it's that relationship between the little things that mean a lot and it's the you know, taking care of the big picture. Nice, <laughs> nice, nice plug there too. Mom yeah, I put that yeah, in. That was real nice. Well, hey, so L9, LN9032LQQIP, where are you at? Uh, I am, uh, I had to hook up to uh, power, so I'm uh, just working that out here. Cool. Sorry, Paul, go ahead. And every two minutes, he has a new screen or he flips his phone. I get it. Um, so here's the, here's the thing, though. Um, I, it's interesting that you went that direction with me because I was going to ask you right away. I'm like, are you guys like that? Because I don't I don't even think it's – my thing is it's not even a perfectionism thing. I, I just like – and maybe I, like we all want it done our way maybe. But I just – I guess I don't understand a, like just leaving a project three quarters of the way done. And, and I totally I think, like that. Well, go ahead. Please elaborate then. What do you mean? Like, how how are you like that, Jeff? Oh, it's just I've I've always been like, hey, um, don't do more than you have to, right? It's not trying to cut corners or anything like that, but it's like, um, I don't know, practical about it, right? You know, um, and I don't know where it comes from, but my philosophy is like, okay, if it, um, it, I I definitely have that mentality in my in my dna like don't overdo it right don't um just keep it simple right it is 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 definitely my motto and and i know it it, it can be taken a lot of different ways but i have that in my dna like gotcha. don't don't have to overdo it good enough is good enough so um i i definitely relate to uh that that um stearns countyism so well and i call that less is more yeah and and I and I weave it in too, but it's it's funny when I do and when I don't and why. That's well, yeah. that's 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 the question I would have for you, John, because I, I guess I see that with Jeff and I understand that and Jeff is you know a, probably a little bit more like that in, in some of those in in, in in you know those ways, but you have extremes, it seems like though, too. Because you yeah. can be very like all in 
like you have been with your career and, and your you know percussion and everything. But then there's times you're like, nah. Yeah. It's like, yeah, whatever. And I and I was I don't care about it. So less is more on that. Why that? Yeah. Um, not enough room. <laughs> I and, and maybe it's I I I've really come to understand this one one phrase that I use it all the time internally in my internal monologue is how you do how how you do one thing is how you do everything. So it's like if you do it if you do one thing half ass, you're you're gonna start doing other things half ass. So I just like it's one of those things like Guess what? When you're done taking a shower, I take the squeegee and I squeegee the, the shower doors. I We have these glass shower doors or whatever. I'm just like, sometimes I'm like, oh, I'm in a hurry. I don't have like, hey, it'll take me two seconds extra. How we do one thing is how we do anything. So so why not not why not why do the best that we can here? You know what I mean? And and I live to that mentality. So I don't know if I'm just not dad's child or or if I, I felt like just always fighting I need that more than anything else. I don't know why. Milkman's kid. You're the milkman's kid. No, it's like <laughs> everybody has different definitions of what a half ass is, right? I mean, what do you want to spend your time on, right? Um, and and you, you make choices, right? And everybody has a different point of view. And and so you you might see it differently, right? And and dad probably sees it differently. Like again, I'm sure in dad's mind, because I'm a little bit more like him, he's kind of thinking, okay. It's it's good enough because I don't want to do that right now. I want to go spend some time with uh, you and Carter, right? Um, I don't know if that was the case, but that could be part of it, right? Um, rather than you know, hey, um, making it look perfect. I don't know. Or so. or sometimes it's just Miller time, you know. Well, I'm sure that had a big part <laughs> of it too, right? I mean. Who doesn't want to go have um, you know Miller High Life and lean on the truck and um, you know smoke Solve the, pipe. the world's problems? Yeah. yeah. Well, and there's definitely some truth to that, and and I I probably you know that's one of those things where I, I keep telling myself to you know I get to work a little bit more on that to be more present in the fact that hey you know I'm trying to you know get this wood chopped up and try to finish this project. You're like, oh, really? The goal is you're hanging with your dad, hanging with your son. Right. Like there's three generations of people cutting wood, you know, to be like, that's the experience, right? And so there's, I, I get, I think I'm picking up when you're laying down. I like it. Paul, yeah. can, you ask, can I ask you more about that? So how you no. do one thing is how you do everything. Is that the saying? Yeah, I, I so, think so. I think that's amazing. I Because I noticed that, and I know what you're talking about, and I notice it in my, you know, my line of work. And, but I don't, this, I don't do that. Like I, I know I want to do that and I want it, but it's like, then I go over here and then I'll do a hundred things. Okay. And then nothing's done. Right. And I'm like, Oh, I should, I, you know, see the value of that, but I, I don't quite get there. So I'm interested. And you can see it. You go to your house, you can see it. Like that's, wow. there's a, like a carbon I'm not company. saying it's the right way. I'm not saying it's the right way for everybody else. But what I'm saying is what's worked for me. And it goes back to the kind of the morning routine. Like I, I literally, I wake up, I do my stretches. I do that kind of thing. And I do some crunches. And then I get out of bed. Guess what? I make my bed. I, I just, I, I know I do better if that's done before I go do this other thing. And it sets me up for success in whatever I'm going to do. And, and, you know, and so once again, if that works for me, great. And so I, I believe that that concept of how you do one thing is how you do everything. So, so why not do everything to the best that you can? Am I going to fail? Am I going to fall short? Absolutely. But fail falling forward, right? You know, that whole idea. But at least if I kind of keep that in the back of my head, as that's my mantra, I'm going to do that. Now, to Jeff's point, Jeff would say, hey, well, you know, hey, you, you're cutting wood, you're doing the project, but what, what's the actual goal here? You know what I mean? Is it, is it to just to cut the wood or help dad out like you wanted? He's already happy. He, you know, we helped him up for the chores he already wanted, and now he'd rather spend time with you. Go we'll spend time with him. So it's like, all right, I, I you know, yeah. But I mean, it, it's no, there's no like right or wrong or winning philosophy here. It's what works for you, and and that's what works for Paul. So that's fine. <laughs> you know, it's just, it's just uh, perspective, and and uh, everybody does a little bit different, and. Uh, Dad definitely has his own own way, <laughs> but uh, yeah. yeah, we 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 all do, and uh, it is what it is. And like I I like to say, it ain't what it ain't as well. I was waiting for it. 
That's the way it works. I love it. That, that's a perfect. I've never way. said that before, have I? Not at all. No. I, I'm just I'm just uh, uh, disappointed we haven't heard of egg salad yet today. Oh, that'll come. All right, that'll come. Awesome. Well, guys, this has been great. Um, any any uh, final uh, can, concluding thoughts? I was going to follow up by saying that you know we were talking about our lives and what we're doing, but I, I I like getting into the that's good enough philosophy or good enough, and and I and to me, you know, I'll go into this next time. Uh, but we talked about that's good enough, kind of this the concepts we talked about today. But I loved how kind of had the the that's off it, and it was good enough, you know, like like how it goes, how we're how those two things back and forth and we can go into that in the future but i just i like that play of that those two philosophies and those two sayings off each other yeah yeah i love it yeah that sounds great yeah and then I guess next good. time i'll remember <laughs> yeah next time we'll have a we'll have a guest and we'll it'll be a surprise guest and we'll uh logistically set that up with you but uh sorry jeff you were gonna say something nope nope all good i'm good you're good. All right. Well, yep. uh, uh, John, we will be uh, sending you uh, photos and, and uh, uh, video because uh, next week, uh, Knucklehead and I are heading to uh, the great state of Colorado. That's right. Rocking. Where are you going to? Uh, Greeley? Going to, um, oh, what's that park? A little place park? called Aspen. A little place called Aspen. California. California. Mm. California. <laughs> the wines of Capistrano. <laughs> Samson, that was be way off. <laughs> Swimmy? <laughs> Swami? Samsonite. A little place Samson. called Aspen. Yeah, so we're going to go to Colorado the next week, do a little bit of hiking, do a little uh, uh, um, spiritual retreat. I love it. All right, well, guys, we'll enjoy and uh, we'll see you all next time. Thanks, Very Paul. Cool. Thanks, Jeff. Take care. Peace. Balloons. Look at that. Fancy. How crazy.